Uh, I will entertain one more question, if because uh, I know there's been some discussion and debate on this. Uh, if not, we will move on to the next question, and that is this. If the image of God is rationality, is Jesus Christ the perfect and full image, perfect rationality? Oh, yes, indeed. He in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the Logos of God. He is the wisdom of God. The wisdom and the power of God. The next question I have is, could you define more fully just what you mean by rationality? Yes. <laughs> I suppose the easiest way is to give a little example, but I could put it in abstract terms if you wanted. But rationality consists in arguing according to the laws of logic. If you say, to use a 2,000-year-old example, if you say all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal, you are acting rationally, you are thinking rationally. But if you say all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates will never die, you are irrational. So rationality consists in thinking, arguing, according to the... Uh, rules of logic. Uh, Dr. Benton, about this, the image of God is rationality, is Jesus Christ perfect rationality, any comment? Dr. Clark said he was. No, but, <laughs> no, but how about you? Uh, argue with me? <laughs> You're not going to argue with him? No, sir. No comment. No comment. Dr. Snake? No comment. That is a comment. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. No, not this time. Not this time. <laughs> uh, there are more questions on this, in this area, <laughs> probing this same uh, subject. Does man bear the image of God, or is man the image of God? I think it is better to say man is the image and glory of God. Uh, you'll find that in 1 Corinthians something or other, 11. <laughs> Chapter 11. Uh, Dr. Morris? Okay. Well, I'm happy with that. That's what 1 Corinthians 11 says. Uh, Dr. Clark, are those who, due to brain damage, do not make decisions, moral or otherwise, show inventiveness or have a knowledge of history, still the image of God? Uh, the image of God, as I think everyone here would agree, has been defaced. We talk about total depravity and sin affects all of our functions. It is also obvious that sin affects some people more than others. Uh, there are degrees of heinousness in sin. Uh, the effects of sin are, more cle are clearer in some people than others, and these would be examples of uh, degrees of these effects. The image is not destroyed, but it is uh, damaged in various ways. Some in one way, some in another, some to greater degree. Panel, any comment? Uh, if rationality, the next question, Dr. Clark, is God's image, if rationality is God's image, no, <laughs> this doesn't quite read right, if Rationality is God's image, or is rationality, which is unique 
from that evidenced by animals, the image. Uh, in my lecture, I tried to show that animals were not rational. They can't do geometry, nor do they have any such thing as narrative. These, I think, are two essential parts of rationality, and the animals do not have it. They are not rational beings. They can't learn Aristotelian syllogisms. <laughs> I, I guess the point of the question is, um, do you really limit this aspect as the uh, only distinguishing uh, feature between animals and man? I think it is the root. Well, of course, there are physical distinctions. I don't suppose that's uh, in contest now. Uh, but yes, the, the uh, rational principle of man would be the basis of what other distinctions you might uh, think of. At least I, I don't know of any exception to that at the moment. Uh, comments on the panel, please? Dr. Moore? No, oh. no expert on animals. Mm -hmm. No expert on animals. Um, <laughs> on the image of God, another question, Dr. Clark. And as soon as we finish this subject, we're going to stand up for a few moments. Um, Dr. Clark, is man more purely or clearly seen as the image of God in the intermediate state than in his created or resurrected body? Uh, well, I would think that uh, man's uh, essential nature is more clearly seen in the intermediate state than it is now because it seems from Christ's words to the thief on the cross uh, that the thief was to be divested of the effects of sin and be united with Christ by the end of that day. Now as for the resurrection body, you have the account of it in the 15th chapter of um, the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. You have the analogy of the grain of wheat uh, being rather small and the stalk of wheat, which is a, somewhat of a plant. And we have the impression that our resurrection bodies are going to be more glorious than our present body. Unfortunately, the description in the 15th chapter is uh, not too lengthy or detailed. It leaves us in considerable ignorance, <clears throat> but I should suppose that although the intermediate state is a clearer example of man's rationality than, the, uh, than our present state, uh, that uh, at least we will have uh, some uh, tools, a body of some sort, to work with that might express our rationality more clearly. But in any case, uh, rationality per se is this uh, logical criterion, and that would not change in any of these three states. I have another question that's very closely related to this, and the point of this question basically then is this. You would say then that the body is in no way related to the image of God. Oh, well, in no way. That's entirely too general. <clears throat> I would say, and this is a rough analogy, I would say that it is related the way it, a hammer is related to a carpenter. I'm afraid I'd come out on the loose, on the short end of a stick. I, I would say that we ought to uh, bear in mind that according to the Bible, uh, God created man uh, to have a body and apparently that was uh, God's ultimate purpose uh, for man, that not that man should be uh, a disembodied spirit, uh, but that he should have a body. And um, so that the uh, resurrection uh, is a very important phase. I mean, we just don't become disembodied spirits, but we uh, receive eternal bodies 
uh, to be united to our spirit and we're not the total being that the total being that God originally purposed until that is so uh, I would say that the um, there are aspects of the body of man that do reflect the uh, image of God the fact the very fact that that we that our bodies function so that we can see uh, the, 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 one of the great glories I think that distinguishes us from animals too is has to do with uh, with our bodies you know even if a monkey uh, could be taught to do some small thing uh, I mean to to, uh, to speak shall we say uh, um, uh, the monkey wouldn't be able to do it because he doesn't have the uh, the voice box to do it um, I mean, if theoretically he could do it, which he can, I think I agree with Dr. Clark, he cannot uh, truly reason, but, um, but even if he could, he doesn't have the voice box to do it. He doesn't have the body to do it. And this, uh, this body that God has given us by which, which we can make words and articulate, we must remember that that articulation was done before writing, um, that that, uh, that is one of the great distinguishing features of, of man and this ability to speak and use words. <clears throat> Anyone else? Dr. Morris? Dr. Benton? Sure, Carry sure. on. No, sir. Uh, one last word, Dr. Clark. Yes. So this is the last on the image uh, of God and God's rationality. I mean, uh, and the rationality aspect. All has been said? I thought you said you were going to give one more question. No, uh, I, I gave this uh, last oh. question here. That was about the... Uh, well, if you want me to make a comment on Dr. Smick, uh, I would uh, uh, agree with his description of uh, some physical parts or so on, but the previous question had to do with the relation between the physical parts and the image of God. And... Uh, <clears throat> I would regard the relationship as being a tool uh, rather than essential part of, uh, of reason. Could I ask a question? Y yes, you may ask a question. That's your privilege also. We have determined, I believe, that man is the image of God. And I'm wondering if man is body or soul, or whether man is body and soul. And if man is made in the image of God, and man is body and soul, how can the image be in only one part and not the other part? You're asking this of Dr. Clark. I'm asking it of anybody. All right, Dr. Clark first. The account in Genesis says that God formed the body of Adam out of the dust of the ground. Then he breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life. And that combination was called a living soul. Since the clay of the earth is not the image of God, and since there is only one other element that goes into the makeup of man, it's that other element that must be the image of God, namely God's breath. So that man is his spirit. Uh, comment? With all respect to Dr. Clark, I don't find that particularly satisfying. Um, animals have bodies and they were not created in the image of God so how could the body be the image of God but the animal was also called an Ephesh Chaya a living soul of course and animals also have spirits but not rational spirits the words the, the word Ruach and Nefesh oh I'm good at Hebrew <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the words nefesh and ruach are used as of animals just as of men. But that, that doesn't bear on the question of the image of God. Uh, Dr. Morris? 
still not very happy with it. <laughs> that probably just points to my dumbness and not to the... To the, 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 the but it, it, I, I think that Dr. Benton has put his, uh, his finger on something of great importance, but I doubt that we could argue it out in, uh, in the time at our disposal here. But uh, the body is spoken of in scripture as an integral part of man, so much so that as uh, Dr. Schmick has pointed out, <clears throat> the resurrection is an important part of scriptural teaching. Bodily values don't cease because we die. Uh, we are not continuing simply as rational spirits, but there is a spiritual body. Now, I am not uh, here talking very much in my own field, and uh, I speak with great reverence and respect in the presence of Dr. Clark, because this is his field, and he knows about it, and I don't. Uh, that's why I'm saying very little more than that I'm not terribly happy with the way it's coming. What's wrong with it? I don't know. <laughs>